Knowing how to effectively create interactive automation scripts is a powerful asset as it allows you to create fully flexible and custom UIs. In this video, I'm going to show you what components are available in C-Sharp and how you use them to create fully dynamic interactive automation scripts. In this video, I'm going to show you what C-Sharp components are available to add interaction to your script and how to use them. I'll do this with a practical example. I'll use Singular Live and VLC again to set up a stream towards Singular Live, but this time it will not be with hard coded values. Instead, the user will be able to select what he wants in the interactive UI that we add. Now, before I get started showing you the script, I first want to show you the data miner help again, because I will not be able to show you every type of component that is available. Instead, I want to show you where you can find all information so you can look it up for yourself whenever you need a, a component that we didn't use today. So in the advanced data miner modules, you go to DMS automation, then using C sharp code in automation scripts. And here you have an, an item building interactive automation scripts with C sharp. If you look into this, you can read this up. This will explain to you what components are available. If you then go to interactive script C sharp code references, these are actually all the items available to be used in C sharp for your automation scripts. And if I scroll to the bottom, the most important ones for our interactive automation script UI are these, for example, the UI block definition or the to see the list of types that are available, you can look at the UI block type. And these are actually all the possible components that you can use in interactive UI. In the script I will create in this video, I'll only use static text, text box, drop down, and button. But using the other components is more or less similar. So whenever you need any of those that we didn't touch today, you can have a look at this list and then click through, for example, to see how you can add. Uh, this type of component. So before I show you the C-sharp code, let me first show you what our interactive UI will look like in the end. So I have a singular life new stream script with two dummies, basically the elements I will need to create my stream in VLC and stream it towards singular life. And then I have a C-sharp action. If I execute this script, I first need to select my elements again, of course. Now, if I execute, a UI will be displayed. So this is the UI that, that we added in the script. So singular life, I can select the application. This list is actually retrieved from this table. And I can set the output stream URL. You can see in this case that I already preset one, but we can change this to whatever URL we want, of course. Here, if I select the TV studio as an example and click next, now I have my VLC configuration. So here I have a drop down with the available streams. Note that in this case, I'm only showing those that are not running because I cannot use this one as it's already in use. And then I can select a movie file that I want to stream. So if I now click next, my configuration would start. I'll do this after showing you the script UI itself or how we built the UI in C Sharp. So for that, I'm going to Visual Studio because I'm using DIS again to easily edit my C Sharp. So first have a look at the XML, same as we had before already, two dummies defined and all the rest is configured in our C Sharp action. So if I close all of this and first go to my script class, I have my run method again that will actually start my script or that's the entry point basically of my script. And the first thing I'm doing now is creating a configuration object. This object will actually contain the reference to my singular live object and to my VLC objects. These are classes that are used to interact with the actual elements. So I have one class for singular live and that one is for example used to create a new flow. And then I have more or less the same thing for VLC, where I then set up a new stream. Now, why do I keep track of these in a configuration class? 
That is because I will create a separate object for each window. So each UI that I want to show in my script, I showed you one for singular life and I showed you one for VLC. And I will pass along the configuration to that class because I want to have access to my singular life object, for example. But I also want to keep track in my configuration of the objects that were selected by the user. I'll show you a bit later why I want to do that. So after I initialized my configuration and made sure that my singular life and my VLC element are available, I'm first creating a new window. And I'll start with the singular live window. This is basically the window I want to see the as the first UI window in my script when it starts. And then I'll use a while loop where I call a show UI method in my window that actually returns a window object again. Basically, when I click a button, I return the window I want to show next. And this is how interactive automation works in C Sharp. Basically, when there is a change here, I will come back to this while loop. And as long as there is a window returned, I will again call the same method. So to look a bit in more detail into the window class. So depending how much knowledge you have of C Sharp, this might look very easy or a bit complex. But basically, I have an abstract class, which is an abstraction of a window. This is generic and the same for every type of window I add, no, no matter if it's a singular live one or a VLC one or any type of window I would like to show in my script. And I pass along the engine object and a configuration object. So in here, there's actually nothing else than just assigning the value to these both these fields. What else do I have in here is basically a reference to the previous window and to the next window. I'll show you a bit later why I'm doing this. And then I have an abstract method show UI. Basically, this is the method every instance inheriting from window needs to implement because that's the one I'm calling from my loop here. And then initially my script starts with a singular live window. So let's have a look at this one. What is now specific to this? The first thing I'm doing here is actually initializing some of the lists or items that I need for this specific window to be shown. So the first thing I do is retrieve the applications from my singular life element to be able to populate the drop down that I want to display. And then I already set an initial value and I verify if the application that is selected is valid. What does this verify selected application do in this case? It basically just checks if first of all one is selected and next if there are no active flows already. So what is an active flow? If I have my singular life element, if there's a flow here already for this specific app, then I cannot create another one. So what I want to do in my UI is make sure you cannot click next if you configured something that is invalid. And then another default value I already provide is the output stream. So this is when I initialize my window here. But now I want to show the UI as well. And this is then specifically what you need for interactive automation UI. So here I will create a couple of components. And these are the ones that I was talking about that we will use in this video and that there are a lot more of that you can look into later on in data miner help. Basically what we do is create a new UI builder. This is the main object where we will add our components to. So I can specify the title for this one. And I set require response to true. This means that when a user clicks some button or does some changes, my UI needs to refresh. I actually expect the user to do something. It's not, it's not just a static display that I want to show. I can set a min and width height. There are a couple of more properties that you can use. I actually commented these out for now because I don't really need any specific size, for example, for my UI. So then what I do is basically adding components to this builder. Now, how do I specify where I want these components to be added? You can see the UI builder as a sort of grid with rows and columns. And I sp basically specify the row definitions and the column definitions of my UI builder. 
What I do in this case is keeping track of all the rows I add. Whenever I'm adding a component, I simply increment the row count. And at the end, we need to define the semicolon separated string of the pixel width we need for our rows or the height, I mean. In this case, I'm adding A, which means Dataminer will automatically determine the height of my row based on the items I added. So if I, for example, add two rows with a couple of components, this will be A semicolon A, and then Dataminer will automatically select the height for me. I would advise to always try and use this as much as possible because this makes it quite easy for you. You don't need to keep track of what pixel height do I need for row one and what pixel height do I need for row two. Basically, Dataminer here will take care of all of this for you. And by specifying the count here and then incrementing each time I need a new row, it's quite simple and I can always reuse the same statement for all my windows, basically. This is for the rows. I also have something similar for my column definitions. In this case, I need two columns, one for some static texts, which is my application, for example, and then another one for the dropdown where you actually select the application. So let's see how I add some UI components. So on my UI builder object, I call a method append block and specify a UI block definition. This is actually a UI block where, which is basically a component. In this case, the first one is a type of static text where I specify the text. And then I specify where in the grid I want to see it. In this case, it's row zero and column zero. So if I execute my script again, This is basically our first static text component. And you can also see the title that I set via my script here. So now for my application, I want to use a dropdown. So I first check if there are any applications and I retrieve these in my constructor here. So if there are any applications, I'm basically building a new UI block definition, but this time a dropdown. And I'm setting no longer a text, but I'm setting an initial value with the application that is selected. By default, I selected one in the constructor because I want to know which one is by default selected. And basically everything that is selected, as I mentioned, is in the configuration object. So here the selected application is a property in my configuration, this one. And this is how I can easily keep track of those. You'll notice I also added a destination variable here. This is basically a string that I'm using to uniquely identify this dropdown and where I can then, when my UI, when for example, a button is triggered to go to the next window, I can actually get the value that was selected by the user. Once on change is a specific setting that is only available for um, options that the user or components that the user can change. For example, I cannot specify this on a static text or at least it would not do anything because there is no change. In this case, once on change means that as soon as the user selects a different value in my dropdown, this will trigger a change in my script. And I will come, down, come back to that a bit later on. So other than that, I'm adding it again to a row, but this time to the next column in my grid on the same row. And I'm specifying a width. You can see here that I didn't specify any width. Actually, it's not needed. The only reason why I'm specifying a width here is because I want my dropdown to be the same width as my text box below. So that's why for both of these, I'm specifying the same width. Now, once I created my dropdown, I can add all the possible options to my dropdown. And again, this is the same if this would be a dropdown or a checkbox list, for example. This is not a component we will use today, but it's very similar to add items to it. And then I'm adding my dropdown to my UI as well. So to my UI builder. I have an extra validation check here. Basically, when you selected an application that is not valid, meaning that the flow is active, I'm going to show an additional static text because the user, if he clicks next, 
will not be able to go to the VLC configuration. I want to show why that is, otherwise it's eager that the user will think that the script simply doesn't work. Then if there are no applications at all, I will also just display that there are no applications. Then similarly for the output stream, I also adding it at static text. And this time I'm not using a dropdown, but I'm using a text box. Again, I'm setting the initial value and I also have a destination variable to identify this component. So I actually can retrieve what the user configured. This time I didn't set once on change. Basically, I don't really need to know when this output stream changes, at least not immediately. Here I want to refresh immediately because I will then check if the configuration or the selected is valid or not. And I'm setting the same width as my dropdown here. Then the last component I'm adding is a button, basically the next button, because if I click this, I want to be able to click this to go to my um, VLC configuration. So as soon as my button is clicked, or any component is changed that has the once on change flag set to true, my UI will refresh or I will be able to handle this change. Now, how does this work? When I execute show UI, basically this is the method that will actually show my UI to the user. So build my UI and display it. I can get the results back from that. And these results can be retrieved or will be returned every time this parameter is changed or the button is clicked. So after this, I am able to retrieve the values that the user configured. So what I'll do first is if there are any applications, I will get the selected application from the dropdown. And this is actually the destination variable that is set here. So that's how I uniquely identify that I want to get this string back from my UI. I do the same for my output stream here. The only difference for this one is that I want to verify that my application is valid. Now, how do I catch if or know that a button was clicked? I can use the was button pressed method for that. Again, with the destination variable of my actual button. And in my case here, I'm checking if my application that is selected is not valid or my output stream is not defined, it's empty then I will return the same window. What happens in this case is that when I return this window, I'm again going to the method where my window was initially shown. So my window would be the same one as here. My while loop would still be valid because it's not null and my, the same window would be shown again. So if I go back to where I was, here, if I did click the next button, I either go to my next window or I create a new VLC window, similarly as how we initially created the singular life element. And I pass along my own window as the previous one. Now, why? that's why I use these next and these previous windows. If I wouldn't do this and I simply always create a new window, when I would come back from the VLC configuration to my singular life, then my initial values would again be this, the ones selected here, instead of the ones that the user configured the first time he went through the script. What I mean with that to make it a bit more easy, if I select TV studio, click next. If I then go back and I wouldn't keep track of the previous instance of this object, then my TV studio would not be selected anymore, but because it would be a new instance of this class and it would be test again. I don't want this. I want to make sure that my selection stays what it is, no matter if I go back and forth. So I keep track of whatever is selected in the configuration class. And I keep track of the previous and next windows if there are any. So that's why I pass along the current window to the next one. Let's see if the validation actually works. If I clear this, click next, then you can see I can actually go to the next window because the output stream is not configured. And you can see actually that the UI refreshes each time I click next, 
That is because it's coming into this method each time and then through the while loop, refreshing my UI again. So let's put this back and go to my next window. So this is the VLC window in this case. This is very similar as the other one. I keep track of the available streams in my elements that I'm retrieving here. And I'm setting the initial configuration. In my show UI, I create another UI builder instance basically. Set the rows, columns again. This time, however, I'm using a static value for one of my columns and that's because I have two buttons now, a back and a next. And I want to make sure that my UI is more or less aligned. So in this case, I'm having a back button here and a next one here. And you can see that the drop downs are also the same size as my previous window. Now, how do I add two buttons or two components on the same column? As you can see here is a full item that is by using column span. So my videos drop down, for example, is on a specific row and the first column, so the second one actually, because it's zero based, but my column span is set to two, meaning that this dropdown actually spans over two columns in my grid. This is the first column, this is then the next one, and this is the third one. So this one spans over both the second and the third column. I do this because then I can align my buttons more easily. This is the only big difference compared to my singular life window. Of course, there are other components here, but again, these are static text and drop down components. And again, whenever my buttons are clicked, I'm retrieving the values that are configured in the UI by the user. Another difference here as well is that I'm not refreshing my UI if I change something here because I don't really need to. I am doing that for this one because if, for example, the current selected one is not valid and you change to another one, I want to refresh that check. But I will show that after we have run our script a couple of times. So this is how I can build the UI. If you now click back, you will see that I try to return the previous window. So the instance I already had for my singular live window instead of a new one, because then I keep the original selected values. If I click next, then there's one more window I have here, and that's the configuration window. This is actually not a window where I'm adding any components, but this is the window I will use to make the actual configuration. So here you can see I'm not really retrieving anything anymore. And in the show UI, I'm also not creating a UI builder object. Instead, I'm going to create the singular live flow and start the VLC stream. But as this is an interactive UI and this steps or these steps can take a bit of time, I want to show progress to the user on the configuration. And I'm using engine.showProgress for that, where I specify a string with the progress that I want to show. Note that I'm always extending or appending to this string and I'm not creating a new string all the time. And here I basically just said that I want this in separate lines. So each time I'm calling this, the progress will be updated in the UI. So then I'm creating a new flow. And if that fails, I'll show an error message instead. Otherwise I will continue. And when my script is fully done and everything worked, I'll just wait for five seconds. I'm just adding this so we can see the actual progress and then I'll simply return null, which stops my script. Because in this case, my window will return null here, the show UI, and my while loop will stop because of that. So let's now test our script a bit more. I'll select TV Studio and this output stream and click next. Then I'm selecting stream two and movie one. If I now click next, I start showing the progress. So starting configuration and now the singular live configuration. This step can take some time because I'm also waiting until this transitions to running. Now that this is done, my VLC configuration also started and this one succeeded quickly. And after five seconds, my script stops. 
Now there is a flow active for this TV studio. So let's start my script again. If I would select the test application now, that's no problem. But if I select the TV studio instead, you can see this application is not valid because the flow is already running and I cannot click next. You also already saw on the next page, no streams were available. That is because all of them are running at the moment. So I actually am able to make my script fully dynamic and get the values from my elements to make sure you cannot click next when it's not possible. Of course, movie I can select because this is a static dropdown. This was a quick introduction to building interactive automation scripts in C Sharp. All details about all possible components can be found in the data miner help, but in this video, you have learned all the basics that you need to build your own interactive automation scripts.